Xiao Tian's fourth wife is making her entrance. Even in front of two empresses, she starts to snatch a man. At this moment, in the flame city, inside the grand hall, above the formation made of spiritual energy, there's a blurry, illusory figure, sitting behind a desk made of spiritual energy. In this resistance against the martial spirit army's invasion, we not only achieved a complete victory, but also sealed the world barrier. By Qing nods, yes, alliance leader Su. In this battle, our victory, owed much to the help of holy demon emperor Luo Tao Yin, and the descendant of the human emperor, esteemed purple emperor, leading the troops. Besides that, their children, great flame empress and holy demon empress, also played a crucial role. According to your described intelligence, the martial spirit army in the meteor flame battlefield hit a large seal at the realm's entrance. The seal would collapse and crack upon detecting any movement, sealing off the entire realm's entrance and exit. Yes, Bai Qing nods. Based on what was just discussed, the main hero of this battle, is it this Xiao Tian? Bai Qing earnestly responds, indeed, without young master Xiao, the hidden Shuo Rui wouldn't have been captured. Zhang Keiji's blood crystal crisis wouldn't have been resolved. The realm's entrance and exit wouldn't have been sealed. Speaking of this, Bai Qing's expression shows some pride. Young master Xiao should be credited with the main achievement. Oh, Su Lee's tone rises a bit. How rare. Little Bai Qing would praise a man like this. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Fen Yuan's eyes suddenly narrow slightly, gazing at the phantom right in front of them. Don't bring another man snatcher here. Even the two of them can't handle him. In an instant, Bai Qing feels the killing intent from behind. If you don't want to drag me into an unnecessary fight, then shut your mouth. Bai Qing still speaks emotionlessly. At the upcoming victory feast, I don't want to waste food. Alright, just teasing, but I'm really curious. Su Ming Li turns her head to gaze in Xiao Tian's direction. How exactly did this young master Xiao accomplish it? According to the reports, the moment Zhang Keiji's blood crystal is detonated, its power could destroy heaven and earth. You swallowed it and remained unharmed. Isn't that a bit too incredible? And, since the realm's entrance and exit have already been sealed, how are you able to bring people back with you? Xiao Tian's space divine power is perhaps one of the top in all the worlds, so it absolutely cannot be exposed. After all, divine power can be plundered, but not answering seemingly is also not good. What to do? Just as Bai Qing is pondering, a steamed purple emperor steps forward with a bow. Alliance leader Su, Xiao Tian is my son-in-law. Commander Bai Qing might not know him well enough. I can explain this point. Su Ming Li turns her head, looking at the descendant of the human emperor. Please go ahead. My son-in-law comes from the body cultivator realm, yet had the fortune to swallow heavenly treasures, continuously breaking the limits of his physical body. This heavenly treasure, judging from the current situation, seems to continuously strengthen and transform his physique, helping him break limits and become stronger step by step. That's right, father-in-law. I really did it that way. Saying this, Xiao Tian grasps the air, space collapsing in his palm. See, I just have great strength. Alliance leader Su, look quickly. My son-in-law's body has become so strong that it forms its own world. We cultivators, conform to the heavens and earth, comprehend them, and merge with them. But my son-in-law is extraordinary. Because of his powerful body, forming a world of its own, his closed body is like a small universe. Under the outburst of his force, the collision between the big world and his small world creates a spatial rupture at its limit. Alliance leader Su, this might be a unique situation in all the myriad worlds. Too special, and very powerful. Hearing this, Su Ming Li slowly stands up. This is our great hero Xiao Tian, young master Xiao. She slowly walks towards Xiao Tian, one hand stroking his cheek, the other resting on his lower abdomen, a body that forms its own world. Indeed remarkable. However, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, like startled kittens, explode with energy. You sly fox, where are you touching? Xiao Tian looks at the phantom before him, especially noticing the spread tails. Blinks. It really is a fox. The next second, Xiao Tian feels enveloped in gentleness. Don't look. Luo Feng Yuan's voice rings in Xiao Tian's ear. Before he could react, Luo Feng Yuan pulls him away. Don't let brother Xiao look at her. Xiao Tian is somewhat bemused. The figure of alliance leader Su is blurred anyway. Whether I look or not makes no difference. Really jealous. Beside them, Bai Qing speaks. We should quickly decide what to do next. As she speaks, she also walks over, standing in front of Su Ming Li's phantom. Looking at Bai Qing blocking her, Su Ming Li seems surprised. Bai Qing, you really are. Don't waste time teasing people. Be more efficient. Bai Qing speaks again. Gaze fixed on the phantom of Su Ming Li before her. She knows this person's mischief too well. On the surface, she seems like a noble lady, but her heart is dark, full of tricks. Su Ming Li chuckles. Got it. Little Bai Qing is as serious as ever. Not cute at all. Bai Qing looks speechlessly at the woman in front. Alliance leader Su, please continue with the allocation of follow-up work. All right, all right, for now. The defense forces stay put. Ensure safety before slowly withdrawing. Little Bai Qing, you don't need to rush back. The situation at the Alliance is a bit chaotic. Better for you to stay outside. As for the rewards, after the great victory, I'll arrange for someone to deliver them as soon as possible. I'll also prepare some cultivation secret realm spots for you to distribute freely. Also, I'll arrange a greenwood dao fruit for everyone present. Greenwood dao fruit? Bai Qing is somewhat surprised. Her hair involuntarily stands on end. You're willing to part with it. Why wouldn't I be? Su 
womanly chuckles lightly. Her phantom's head turns towards Xiao Tian, reluctant to part with the Dao fruit. You can't catch such an amazing man. Upon hearing this, everyone present pauses, their expressions frozen, especially Xiao Tian, with a look of astonishment. What's happening? Luo Feng Yuan, in a rush, stomps her foot. Who are you trying to catch? Seeing this, Su Ming Li feels a great satisfaction. Just like me. One sentence and such an amusing scene unfolds. Satisfied. Saying this, she even winks at several people, waves her hand. Then, see you next time. The power of the formation dissipates, and Su Ming Li's phantom disappears. Ah, that fox is so annoying. Luo Feng Yuan complains, turning to look at Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan, she's acting like that. Aren't you angry? Zi Ruoyan turns her head, her face filled with displeasure, but still says, No, why get angry with such a bored, somewhat psychologically twisted dead fox? The others are dumbfounded, still saying she's not angry. Do you want to hear what you're saying? Just then, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan both look towards Bai Qing. Luo Feng Yuan, with clenched fists, smiles at Bai Qing. Little Bai Qing, let's talk about that fox. Zi Ruoyan looks at her with a smile. Let's go to that corner. Just a casual chat. Don't be afraid. Seeing this, Bai Qing looks at Xiao Tian with tearful eyes. Save me. Save me. Xiao Tian was about to stop the two women. Well, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan both turn their heads. Lord Xiao, is there something? Xiao Tian immediately backs down, slapping his head. Well, I just remembered to ask my two fathers-in-law if they believe I just got stronger. Ah, getting older and forgetful. I even called the wrong person just now. Little Bai Qing is dumbfounded. Save me, young master Xiao. Xiao Tian can only pretend not to see. Sorry little Bai Qing, I can't help. At this time, Xiao Tian approaches esteemed purple emperor and Luo Tao Yin. Both fathers-in-law, you finally believe what I said. I just got stronger. Before finishing, esteemed purple emperor suddenly slaps Luo Tao Yin's thigh, pointing at him. Brother, heavenly treasures continuously strengthen the body, breaking limits to form a small world. Your idea is too brilliant. Before coming to communicate with alliance leaders Su through the formation, they had been discussing how to make up an excuse for Xiao Tian to hide his divine power. In the end, it was Luo Tao Yin who decided to make a lie believable, mix seven parts truth with three parts fiction. Xiao Tian indeed comes from a body cultivator realm, is indeed a body cultivator, and has broken his physical limits. So start from this aspect. Just make it up. Say his physical body is invincible, able to tear space with his bare hands. How about that? Xiao Tian is somewhat confused. The more they talk, the stranger it gets. He poses, both fathers-in-law. I'm really just physically strong, leading to great power. It's not some divine power. If you don't believe, you can try fighting me. No disrespect, but together you two can't beat me. Esteemed Purple Emperor and Luo Tao Yin look at each other, naturally nodding. We know. Esteemed Purple Emperor shrugs. You're stating the obvious. Of course we can't win. Your limit-breaking body is indeed strong. No problem there. Luo Tao Yin speaks sincerely. Child, we saw you fighting Zhang Keiji. We couldn't beat you now. Why doubt yourself? You need to have confidence. Luo Tao Yin suddenly remembers. By the way, the part about Xiao Tian acquiring heavenly treasures needs to be supplemented. Just add it to the part where you met your daughter. Otherwise, it might create loopholes. Esteemed Purple Emperor signals. Oh, big brother, please speak. Xiao Tian, somewhat helpless. It's just that I'm physically strong. Why make up such a story? At this time, Puppy also appears by his side, pats his shoulder to comfort him. Master, please restrain your grief. From their current logic, your body can't possibly be this strong. Only by attributing divine power to you does it make sense. Xiao Tian points at the two still making up stories. How do you explain them wanting to fabricate a lie about my physical strength? That way, they don't have to worry about your divine power being stolen. Xiao Tian, resigned, holding his forehead. Why is this so troublesome? Just tell the truth, and if they don't believe, so be it. Now you have to use lies to cover lies. Isn't this chaotic? Luo Tao Yin ponders. Got it. Xiao Tian comes from the body cultivator realm, grew up alone, surviving through battles. Therefore, he owns such extraordinary combat skills, but with too many enemies. These foes plot to kill him. Xiao Tian couldn't defeat them all, escaping until he was cornered. By chance, he came across a heavenly treasure, swallowed it, breaking his physical limits. His personal small universe began to form. Space vibrated, responding to a distant summoning talisman. When Xiao Tian opened his eyes again, he saw your daughter. A new story begins. Hearing this, Xiao Tian gets excited. Yes, I was summoned by Zi Ruoyan while being pursued. What you're saying is the truth. Esteemed Purple Emperor gives him a big thumbs up. Great performance talent. Seeing this, he resigns himself. No explanation helps. He, let it be destroyed. Right now, at the victory feast, a grand feast is laid out. Xiao Tian points to the guards hooking arms, drinking, eating, and laughing. See their smiles? It's not about me being generous. They deserve it. Yes, they've been guarding the meteor flame battlefield, always vigilant against surprise attacks by the martial spirit army. The food and wine you brought, they deserve it. Just then, Xiao Tian silently watches this lively scene for a while, already being found by Luo Tao Yin, who drags him away. Child, come drink. Esteemed purple emperor, slightly tipsy, gestures, come, child, to you. Luo Tao Yin grabs a nearby wine jar, pouring while saying, speaking of which, we are fated, though there were some misunderstandings. But after all, I was personally saved by
by you. Child, as an elder, let's have a drink together. A steamed purple emperor also starts pouring, nodding in agreement. What a coincidence. I too was personally saved by this child. Xiao Tian shakes his eyebrows. Can we not talk about this? Drinking well is good enough, really. After three rounds of drinking, Luo Tao Yan and esteemed Purple Emperor tightly hugging Xiao Tian, eyes glazed, drunkenly gesturing. Actually, the initial misunderstanding, it's easy to resolve. We could simply keep to our own. Xiao Tian's mouth twitches, feeling the next words might not be good. Luo Tao Yan laughs heartily, belching. I'll call you little brother. You call me daddy. Xiao Tian is speechless, grabs Luo Tao Yan's collar. Do you want to hear what you're saying? Nearby, esteemed Purple Emperor shakes his hand, face flushed. It's a mess. This is a mess. What's the mess? I'm the eldest. You're the second. He's the third. No, you must listen to me. Z Ruoyan and he were married first. Even if Luo Feng Yuan wants to join, she's still behind. If we keep to our own, I should be the eldest. You the second, and he the third. So he calls me Big Daddy. You little daddy. Speaking, esteemed Purple Emperor, face red, stares at Xiao Tian. Is this not the logic? Third brother? Xiao Tian sits there, picks up the wine bowl in front of him and drinks it all, then wipes his mouth with his sleeve. Let it be destroyed. Hurry up. Suddenly, Xiao Tian, sitting in the center, for some reason, suddenly feels a killing intent. But this intent is not aimed at him. The next moment, two chilling voices sound. So, does he have to call me second sister-in-law? So, Xiao Tian should call me big sister-in-law, right? Esteemed Purple Emperor and Luo Tao Yan sitting there, suddenly shiver, half sobered up by the alcohol. They slowly turn around, only to see two figures standing behind them, swallowing nervously. Xiao Tian puts his hands together, sincerely praying, may the Lord protect you, big and second father-in-law, watching the two being dragged into a room. Xiao Tian waves them off. Esteemed Purple Emperor, you're being pinched. No more drinking. Won't drink next time. Wife, calm down. Luo Tao Yan similarly, just playing around. Wife, purely for fun. Don't be angry. With the pleas, Xiao Tian silently watches his two fathers-in-law, one with his ear twisted, the other by the horn, gradually leaving. Xiao Tian looking at the messy wine bowls in front of him, suddenly laughs. This feeling, actually quite good. Just then, two wine jars, suddenly slam onto the table, startling Xiao Tian. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan look at Xiao Tian. Brother Xiao, shall we have a drink? Lord Xiao, I'm a bit thirsty. Do you want to drink something to quench your thirst? Looking at the two empresses about to explode, Xiao Tian feels helpless. Who will save me? The next second, he slowly raises his hand, reaching for the plate of stir-fried kidney flowers on the table that's not yet finished. Time is tight, replenish as much as possible. The next early morning, esteemed purple emperor walks to the front courtyard of the hall, but finds that people have already arrived early in the courtyard of the hall. Looking closely, it's his good son-in-law Xiao Tian. Up so early, father-in-law, good morning, care for a cop. Esteemed purple emperor waves his hand. With my physique, how could I possibly need to drink this? A moment later, Luo Tao Tian, yawning, then finds Xiao Tian and esteemed purple emperor have already gotten up early. You guys got up pretty early. Luo Tao Tian walks up, just in time to see the two turn to look at him. Big brother, good morning, but noticing the goji berries in their hands, Luo Tao Tian is puzzled. Second brother, is your body not doing well? Little Xiao needing it I understand, but you too. Soon, the sun has risen, the three of them hold their teacups, blow on them, then sip, exhaling a long breath, comfortable, their actions and expressions, identical. Just then, footsteps sound from behind. Luo Feng Yuan looks at the three. Time to go. We need to attend the morning meeting. Today we'll discuss how to deal with the captives. Soon after, everyone gathers in the hall, preparing to discuss the matter of the captives. If it really can't be helped, then execute. After years of fighting and deep-seated hatred, execution is a pity. Let Lord Xiao take them to Green Flame Mountain. There will be no more problems. Luo Tao Tian is puzzled. What can little Xiao do with those people on Green Flame Mountain? It's about Xiao Tian capturing some repentant members of the Blood Rune clan, using them to feed livestock on the Green Flame Mountain Ranch. Luo Tao Yan can't help but ask. They just obey like that? Luo Feng Yuan, excited, eagerly describes what she saw. More than obedient, now the Blood Rune clan wake up early in the morning, kneeling to bow, repenting for those they've killed. Every last day of the week, they sit around a bonfire, crying and sharing their journeys of remorse. While crying, they also hit themselves, shouting apologies. Hearing his daughter's words, Luo Tao Yan's eyes widen. Can't help but look at Xiao Tian. That's so bizarre? Alright, then let little Xiao give it a try. Esteemed Purple Emperor also nods, scanning the surroundings. Big brother, once things here are settled, accompany me to Hundred Flower Domain. The son of the Flower Head Tribe's chief is seeking my help to deal with a strange species with golden horns on their heads suddenly appearing in Hundred Flower Domain. A strange species with horns on their heads? Luo Tao Yan clicks his tongue in wonder, looking towards Bai Qing, coming from the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. Have you heard of this race? Not at all. Bai Qing gently shakes her head. Just then, Xiao Tian's voice arises. Well, you're talking about the ancient god tribe, an ancient race that has existed for a long time. Lord Xiao, could it be related to that inheritance book from Luo Yan back then? She remembers. The inheritance in that book was acquired by Xiao Tian. Seems like it was called the Ancient God Tribe Enlightenment Inheritance. I encountered the Flower Head Tribe in the mysterious Wealth Mountain region. Came to
to know about this, so I went with Long Chiu Dao to the Hundred Flower Domain, clashed with this ancient god tribe. Xiao Tian then recounts the process, including relying on his strength, directly forcefully moving the Hundred Flower Domain, integrating it with the mysterious Wealth Mountain region. Even later, moving the entire Holy Demon Domain, integrating it with his own named Empress Domain, explaining everything in detail. Everyone listens in astonishment, amazed by Xiao Tian's strength. After a while, a steamed purple emperor slaps his thigh, turning the impossible into possible. That's divine power. Indeed, this saying makes sense. This divine power is truly enviable. Luo Tao Yan pats a steamed purple emperor's shoulder. Junior brother Z, how come you're not even as good as your own son-in-law? I said it's not divine power. There's no such thing. It's just an unparalleled physical body. Right. This physical body is indeed enviable. Stubborn elders, trying to change their views, is almost impossible. Then Luo Tao Yan suddenly speaks up. Since little Xiao has already resolved the hundred flower domain issue, let's go straight back to the holy demon domain to see how little Xiao integrates the holy demon domain with the empress domain. Before he finishes speaking, Luo Tao Yan's expression suddenly freezes. As if realizing something, he slowly turns his head, looking at Xiao Tian cautiously. Child, did you just say that you combined the territorial space of the Great Flame Dynasty and the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion into the Holy Demon Domain, including some fragments of realm worlds around the Holy Demon Domain as well? Xiao Tian, sitting silently on the side, nods gently. Luo Tao Yan's face reveals a sudden understanding, starts to laugh heartily. You kid, always unknowingly helping me. The Xiao Tian chosen by my daughter truly is my lucky star. Luo brother, you're this happy. Junior brother Z, you don't know. I used the earthly sovereign technique to bind with the holy demon domain. I thought I wouldn't be able to improve my realm in this lifetime, but I didn't expect little Xiao to integrate so many territories with the holy demon domain. My power has started to increase again. He can't help but cover Xiao Tian's hand. When you fully integrate the holy demon domain with the empress domain, I can't even imagine how much my strength will increase. Ha ha ha. You really are a likable kid. Junior brother Z, your talent is too strong, advancing so quickly in your cultivation. In the future, when sparring, I'm afraid I won't be able to win against you anymore. Now it seems, with this precious son-in-law, you will ultimately be the younger brother. Big brother, you, are you being childish? Seeing this, Luo Tao Yan tightly hugs Xiao Tian. Jealous, you're just jealous, feeling Xiao Tian struggle. Luo Tao Yan can't help but ask, Dear son-in-law, what's wrong? I need to go back to continue pushing the holy demon domain into the empress domain. Hearing this, Luo Tao Yan pats him on the shoulder. Go ahead, dear Dear son-in-law, I'll be waiting obediently to receive the cultivation value you send me. Seeing this, esteemed purple emperor is nothing but envious. Showing off, blatant showing off, really. At this moment, Luo Tao Yan is floating in midair, enveloped by the power of the heavenly and earthly rules. As the breath inside him crazily rises, the great Tao of fire and the great Tao of strength begin to merge together. Finally, the holy demon flame ignites, eventually condensing into a mark of lightning, branded right in the middle of Luo Tao Yan's forehead. The power between heaven and earth also resonates with Luo Tao Yan, 21st level. Ha ha ha. So comfortable. As Luo Tao Yan slowly lands, a steamed purple emperor steps forward to ask, How does it feel? Luo Tao Yan lifts up his hands. In his palms, not only is demon energy surging, but also the rhyme of the Tao emerges. This rule of heaven and earth appears. I've heard a saying, in these myriad worlds, being at the 20th level is just the beginning. Now that I've reached the 21st level, I realize the true meaning of that saying. Probably a hundred of my past selves combined couldn't beat my current self. Luo Tao Yan clenches his fists, with my strength. Protecting you all is no problem. Esteemed purple emperor gently pats his shoulder. Big brother, still, don't be too complacent. The old ancestor of the Shue family reached the 21st level who knows how many years ago. His current strength, no one knows. Luo Tao Yan nods. Don't worry, I know what's important. I won't be careless. Besides, with the earthly sovereign technique, the holy demon domain is my home ground. Even if the old ancestor of the Shue family wants to come to the holy demon domain to capture you, he has to ask me first. If that's the case, then all the better. Esteemed purple emperor says, as if he thought of something, laughs, I didn't expect this kid's divine power to be of such great help to big brother, junior brother Z, I've said it so many times, there's no such thing as divine power, it's just physical strength, remember, this kind of thing needs to be a habit in daily life, so that at crucial moments, it doesn't give you away, esteemed purple emperor quickly shuts his mouth and nods, reflecting inwardly, just then, Xiao Tian, along with Long Chiu Dao, arrives flying, but when Long Chiu Dao looks at esteemed purple emperor, he is stunned, why does this person have the imperial court's fate surrounding him, and Luo Tao Yan and esteemed purple emperor curiously look at Long Chiu Dao. Is this the holy dragon soul mentioned by my daughter, who lost some memory due to living too long? Noticing Long Chiu Dao's gaze, Xiao Tian is somewhat puzzled. Why are you always staring at him? You're not going to tell me. My father-in-law is the reincarnation of the human emperor, are you? Long Chiu Dao shakes his head. Impossible. Not to mention the human emperor is still alive and hasn't reincarnated. Even if he did, the human emperor has extremely high standards for his appearance. But, his 
his look definitely doesn't qualify. A steamed purple emperor in disbelief points at himself. I'm ugly. Although he's not stunningly handsome, he's still quite elegant. Otherwise, how could he father a daughter like Zi Ruan? A steamed purple emperor has never suffered such an insult. Thinking this, a steamed purple emperor points at Luo Taotian. What about him? To this question, Long Chiodao doesn't answer, only showing a polite yet somewhat awkward smile. Luo Taotian, who was previously teasing his junior brother Zi, suddenly turns gloomy. If the old man's vision is poor, don't speak nonsense. Really curious, Zi Ruan asks Long Chiodao, why do you keep staring at my father? Supreme Emperor's body is surrounded by Imperial Court's fate. This is really unusual. Hearing this, esteemed Purple Emperor takes out the Human Emperor seal. Could the Imperial Court's fate on me come from this? Long Chiodao looks at the Human Emperor seal for a long time, speechless. Sigh, can I show it to Lord Xiao? Esteemed Purple Emperor nods. You can. Long Chiodao hands the Human Emperor seal to Xiao Tian. Lord Xiao, squeeze it hard. Xiao Tian looks surprised, glancing at Long Chiodao. Squeeze hard. Are you sure? Esteemed Purple Emperor also casually waves his hand. Little Xiao, just do as he says. Squeeze it and see. This is the Human Emperor seal. It can't be squeezed to break, right? The next second, there's a crack sound. The Human Emperor seal actually breaks. This, this, my Human Emperor seal. How did it crumble like tofu? Xiao Tian looks at the crack Human Emperor seal in his hand. His mouth corners twitching slightly. It doesn't make sense. It can't even withstand one ten thousandth of my strength. This Human Emperor seal. Why is it so fragile? Suddenly, Zi Ruoyan notices something. Look, what's that? Why is it blue? Xiao Tian also notices something off. Could this Human Emperor seal be categorized into white, blue, purple, gold, red colors according to quality? Long Chiodao looks puzzled. Lord Xiao, you figured it out? Xiao Tian thinks of games from his past life. How did he have the patience to categorize Imperial Court's fate according to game equipment colors? Was he bored or something? Long Chiodao spreads his hands. The human emperor once answered, who made me a student abroad once? Hearing this, Xiao Tian's expression freezes. Then he laughs. Ha ha ha. So that's it. It's actually like this. It seems the human emperor once had the opportunity to visit Earth. At this moment, a steam purple emperor trembles all over, cautiously picking up the fragments of the human emperor's seal from the ground, then holds them in his arms, grieving, my human emperor's seal, woo woo, Xiao Tian, however, smiles and says, all right, bring out all the human emperor's seals you have, don't let my father-in-law continue to be upset, hearing this, a bewildered esteemed purple emperor looks puzzled, the next second, Long Chiodao takes out all the human emperor's seals from the holy dragon relic, then Long Chiodao explains, originally, the human emperor's weapon was this, and to practice the heavenly stamp skill, he crafted many human emperor seals, categorized into five tiers. Saying this, Long Chiodao picks up a human emperor seal. The method to identify the quality of a human emperor seal is to probe it with spiritual energy and see what color light it emits from the core, like this gold one I have in my hand. In the human emperor's words, it's what's called a golden legend. Hearing this, Xiao Tian is completely flabbergasted. Human emperor, what on earth did you learn during your studies on earth? It's so overly dramatic. Inside the Flame City dungeon, when Xiao Tian appears before them with Long Chiodao, they each have their own thoughts. Shua Rui thinks, he's here to kill us, right? Sean Keiji, on the other hand, thinks, don't let me find an opportunity. If I do, I'll definitely kill you. Suddenly, Xiao Tian steps forward two steps. Sean Keiji instinctively steps back two steps. What does your stepping back mean? Am I that scary? Am I that terrifying? Your behavior makes it seem like I'm some kind of villain. Sean Keiji sweats profusely and suddenly takes two more steps back, stretches his neck. I'm not afraid. Beside him, Shua Rui's mouth twitches slightly. Speaking of which, you keep retreating while claiming you're not afraid. Who would believe that? Watching the two go back and forth, Xiao Tian waves his hand, with a smile, moves forward. Zhang Keiji is instantly terrified, even on the verge of crying. Just kill me already. Don't smile at me. Shua Rui is the same. Kill or maim me, as you wish. Your strength is so overwhelming. Is it fun to intimidate us? Lord Xiao, what did you do to scare them like this? Looking at them, they must have suffered some inhumane treatment, right? I didn't do anything. It's strange. These two are high-ranking in the Martial Spirit Army. Why would they be so cowardly? Hey, Shua Rui and Zhang Keiji are scared stiff on the spot, pressing against the wall, motionless. Xiao Tian's mouth twitches for a moment, then he smiles again. This won't do. The thoughts of these two are dangerous. They must be re-educated. Wait for me. Long Chiodao nods. All right, Lord Xiao, please. Looking sympathetically at the two. Sigh. Don't worry. Lord Xiao certainly won't play you to death. Then Xiao Tian reaches out to grab them. The two, like startled deer. The next second, Xiao Tian unexpectedly juggles them, constantly spinning them in the air. The howling sound kept on ringing out. A moment later, Shua Rui and Zhang Keiji were both pale-faced, foaming at the mouth, and had fainted. All right, throw them into the holy dragon relic and take them back. Xiao Tian, pinching his own wrist, signaled to Long Chiodao beside him. Then, Long Chiodao stepped forward vigorously, placing the holy dragon relic above the heads of the two. As a streak of golden light flashed, they were directly sucked into the holy dragon relic. Seeing this, Xiao Tian waved at Long Chiodao. That's enough. The rest is up to you. I'm going back to rest. Okay, Lord.
Lord Xiao. A moment later, Xiao Tian was lying behind Zi Ruoyan. While Zi Ruoyan was chatting with Xiao Yuer on video, Zi Ruoyan told Xiao Yuer, just stamp red on the memorials from the officials. For things you don't understand, you can ask Prime Minister Zhong for advice. Prime Minister Zhong inquired about the expansion of the Welfare Institute. Shall we approve it? Yes. Zi Ruoyan suddenly asked, what about my grandfather? Xiao Yuer raised her little head, pondering, your great-grandfather went out shopping. Seems like he's going to visit the Heaven Number no. 1 Welfare Institute. At this moment, Shue Fugui, with his hands behind his back, stared at the signboard in front of him. Heaven Number no. 1 Empress and Prince with boundless love and caring welfare, muttered Shue Fugui with a wry smile, shaking his head. Little Xiao, this kid, really came up with quite a name. Children from the Welfare Institute, just off from school, walking on the road, saw the familiar figure of Shue Grandfather standing there. Grandpa Shue is here, come quick. Hearing the voice, Shue Fugui turned his head. Oh dear, slow down. Shue Fugui hurriedly caught a one-armed little girl. Just then, a mocking voice came, my good brother, I didn't expect you to really be here, you really made your brother search hard. The next second, Shua Anxiang appeared behind Shua Fugue. what's wrong, good brother, aren't you happy to see your brother? Seeing the man not far away, Shua Fugue's expression became more solemn, putting down the little girl he was holding, children, go back to the institute, don't stay in this place. As the children were about to leave, Shua Anxiang spoke again, brother, I just wanted to get close to the children, why are you sending them away? You really hurt your brother's feelings. As soon as he finished speaking, the man suddenly waved his hand. Spiritual energy turned into frost blades, flinging directly at the children running towards the Welfare Institute. Shue Fugui was instantly alarmed. Be careful. In a flash, Shue Fugui appeared in front of the children, spiritual energy erupting from his body, blocking the ice blades. But the next second, the ice blades pierced through the barrier, hitting Shue Fugui's chest. Shue Fugui fell to the ground, spitting out a mouthful of blood. Shue Anxiang, looking at Shue Fugui, couldn't help but shake his head. Brother, you really live up to the name of the God of Wealth. I'm at the 20th stage, and my strike couldn't break through your defense. So many high-quality protective spiritual artifacts on your body. It makes your brother envious. Shue Fugui wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. Shue Anxiang, have you gone mad? Why attack these children? Hearing this, Shue Anxiang laughed. Mad? These worthless little things. If they die, they die. Why are you so agitated? At this moment, a slave mark appeared in Shue Anxiang's hand. Where your good son-in-law, daughter, and granddaughter, father asked me to brand you with slave marks and take you back. You no longer deserve to be part of the Shue family. We don't deserve to be part of the Shue family? What a joke. When have we ever really been part of the Shue family? Us children born out of wedlock are just like dogs for your amusement, aren't we? Your mother was just a maidservant. You were born a dog for our amusement. That's right. A dog? So in your eyes, our eighth brother who died in battle for the Shue family was just a guard dog that died, and our tenth sister, forced to marry into the Su family, wasn't even considered a family alliance. Just treated like a dog you sold off? Shue Anxiang scoffs. Why are you so angry? Turns out you think of yourself as human. Please. You're born out of wedlock. You should be stepping stones for us legitimate children. Shue Fugui clenches his teeth. You, this is too much. Fine, my dear brother, come and receive the brand first. Shue Anxiang, with a sickening smile, steps towards Shue Fugui, thinking I'll just surrender. It won't be that easy. Shue Fugui takes a deep breath, pulling out a cyan feather fan in his other hand. Suddenly appears a brilliantly colored spirit stone, which he inhales fiercely. At the same time, he swings his arm fiercely, with the cyan feather fan waving, immediately conjuring up a whirlwind. Shue Anxiang's face changes. Wind demon feather fan. This thing is actually in your hands? The next second, Shue Anxiang is blown into the sky by a gust of wind, accompanied by howls of agony. Shue Anxiang's body erupts with spiritual energy, blocking the attack of the wind demon feather fan. I underestimated you just now. I didn't expect the wind demon feather fan, containing the great Tao of wind, to be in your hands. Next, I'll kill you directly. Shue Fugui rises into the air, just you. Then, in the palm of Shue Fugui, suddenly hovers several crystals emitting electric light, their patterns shimmering with purple light, the roaring of thunder, faintly audible. If I use this spiritual artifact, how will you respond? Shue Anxiang freezes. Thunderbolt Divine Thunder Crystal, equivalent to a 20th level strike when exploded. One costs a billion top grade spirit stones. Only fools buy such things. You bought 10? Shue Anxiang looks at the crystals, heart bleeding. Shue Fugui, this wastrel, really doesn't treat money like money. 10? Shue Fugui sneers. In his other palm, more Thunderbolt Divine Thunder Crystals appear. I bought a whole box. Dare to treat me like a dog? Today I'll blow you to pieces. Meanwhile, Zhong Yang Ming is enjoying the breeze. Drinking tea from Green Flame Mountain, but suddenly, a huge explosion sounds, accompanied by a giant mushroom cloud. Zhong Yang Ming is shocked. Holy shit, did someone blow up Lord Zhao's pig? I need to check this out. Meanwhile, in the smoke following the explosion, a figure emerges. As the smoke clears, Shui Anxiang is blasted into a mushroom head. Fatty, you really enjoyed that explosion just now, didn't you? Saying this, Shui Anxiang launches an attack on Shui Fugui. I'll slice off the fat from your body, one sword stroke at a time. Defend, Shui Fugui shouts lowly, suddenly raising his hand to make a gesture. Under his sleeve, a talisman tied
applied to his wrist, suddenly shines brightly. A heavy aura surges out, like a mountain appearing, forming a barrier in front. Above that barrier, clouds seem to drift, hovering above the mountains. Even a splendid sun rises, as if the scorching sun in the sky. In an instant, Shui Anxiang's attack is melted away. As three swords fall to the ground, Shui Anxiang is a bit baffled. Holy crap, cloud mist and early sun mountain ceiling seal? It costs six trillion top grade spirit stones to buy just five. And you used it just like that? Shui Anxiang roars uncontrollably. You think having money allows you to do whatever you want? Blizzard of the sky, as spiritual energy erupts from Shui Anxiang. Shui Fugui raises his hand to block, but ultimately, there's still a gap in their realms. Shui Fugui is shaken to the side. Shui Anxiang slowly approaches, bastard born out of wedlock, having money. So what? In the end, you're just trash, reeking of money. It's disgusting. Shui Fugui clenches his teeth, his other hand trembling as he takes out a bottle of pills, pours them into his mouth. We'll just see who can last longer. Is it your strength or my wealth that's greater? Shui Anxiang grits his teeth. Damn fat pig. I refuse to believe I can't kill you. Just then, a message comes through Shui Anxiang's communication jade. Husband, come quickly. There's a surprise. Hearing this, Shui Anxiang disregards Shui Fugui. You're lucky. Next time I'll come to take your dog life. Shui Anxiang soared into the sky, secretly leaving a snowflake that merged into Shui Fugui's body. At this time, Zhong Yangming also rushes over in a hurry. Master Shui. He quickly helped Shui Fugui out. Master Shui. What happened just now? People from the Shui family came, wanted to brand us as slaves, forcefully take us back. Prime Minister Zhong, don't be afraid. When the time comes, before he can finish, Zhong Yangming shudders. When the time comes, the Shui family will be finished. It's a sin to attack you. Shui Fugui listens, baffled. As Prime Minister Zhong gone mad, the Shui family wiping us out is more likely. How could they be wiped out? Meanwhile, aboard a warship in the void, a woman dressed lavishly, dignified in appearance, but with thin lips and sparse eyebrows, appears somewhat harsh. She is Shui Anxiang's wife, a descendant of the human emperor from the Ring Mountain Realm's Z family. Z Yusin, she secretly thinks, when my husband returns, I must tell him this good news. At this moment, Z Yusin glances behind her, sees Shui Anxiang, all disheveled, approaching, accompanied by a burnt smell. What happened to you? Shui Anxiang waves his hand. It's all because of Shui Fugui. That dead fat pig, deeper than I thought. You found Shui Fugui and the others? Only Shui Fugui. No idea where the others are. But why did you urgently call me back? Z Yusin smiles. I found our ancestors' land. In that lowly and dirty lower realm, Shui Anxiang is also surprised. What? Are you sure? After confirmation, Shui Anxiang can't help but kiss Zi Yusin. Wife, I'm lucky to have you. Meanwhile, in the void of the Empress Domain, Zi Royan can't help but exclaim, wow, it's huge. At this moment, Bai Qing, chewing on beef jerky, asks, can we still integrate more space into this realm world? Xiao Tian scratches his head. We can, but we have to wait until the spiritual energy stabilizes, causes the tuft of hair on Bai Qing's head to stand up. I want to join the Empress Alliance. Zi Royan and Luo Feng Yuan almost simultaneously intervene. Not allowed. Why not? Bai Qing looks at the two women, counter-questioning. Since it's the Empress Alliance, as the name suggests, empresses naturally should be able to join. I am an empress too. It's not allowed because it's not allowed. Exactly. The Empress Alliance is a tacit agreement between us and Lord Xiao. It's not convenient for you to be involved. Bai Qing, somewhat disappointed, shakes her head. But, our holy dragon domain, affected by the war, is facing spiritual energy exhaustion. If we can't find a suitable realm to settle in, the holy dragon domain will ultimately become desolate. Hearing this, Z Royan becomes a bit more lenient. You can join, but if you don't follow the rules, looking towards Xiao Tian, Lord Xiao, it can be merged, so it can also be split, right? Xiao Tian scratches his cheek. It's not easy to split. As soon as he finishes speaking, Zi Royan gives him a familiar smile. What did you say? I didn't hear clearly. Xiao Tian then gives a thumbs up. Very easy to split. Getting Xiao Tian's response, Zi Royan then looks at Bai Qing. Can you accept that? Bai Qing nods. Understood. If my clan members don't follow the rules, it means I, the Dragon Empress, have failed in discipline. Saying this, Bai Qing pats her chest. Those who disobey will be beheaded. Luo Feng Yuan smiles in approval. That's how it should be. Those who don't obey should be beheaded. We are empresses after all. As soon as she finishes speaking, Zi Royan nudges her head. Please think properly. If you keep beheading, will there be anyone left in your holy demon domain? No beheading then. No beheading. Don't get angry. You just need to manage your people well. Don't break the rules of the Empress Alliance. Don't be like this cow. Always thinking about killing. Grateful. Bai Qing bows to Zi Royan and thanks. Zi Royan, observing Bai Qing's constantly swaying tuft of hair. Do you need anything else? Now that I am part of the Empress Alliance, I should be able to come to Prince Palace for meals often, right? Zi Royan looks at the tuft of hair on Bai Qing's head. Of course, if you like, you can ask Prime Minister Zhong to cook more dishes. Hearing this, Bai Qing's tuft of hair shakes even more vigorously, expressing her inner joy. Seeing this, Zi Royan finally knows how to read the emotions of the short white-haired one. Now, Xiao Tian heads to Green Flame Mountain to first visit the Flower Divine Ancient Tree. Long Chiodao points upwards. Lord Xiao, look there, is it bad? Wakai Tu shakes his head. No, that's 
a branch deliberately grown by the flower divine ancient tree for skewering barbecue. Suddenly, the flower divine ancient tree's thin branch makes a crack sound. A slender twig falls right in front of the three. Xiao Tian is puzzled. What's this? Hua Kai Tu explains. Lord Xiao, the twig of the flower divine ancient tree skewers meat. Grilled, it has a unique flavor. At that moment, the flower divine ancient tree sways. Even as a skewer, I want to be the tastiest skewer in this realm. Xiao Tian is pleasantly surprised. Oh, not bad, not bad. He gently pats the flower divine ancient tree. Worth planting you here on Green Flame Mountain. Very good. At this moment, Di Xinlu, who is carrying manure, comes over from a distance. He quickly puts down his load and approaches Xiao Tian. Bowing, he says, Master, your grandfather was attacked by unknown enemies a few days ago. The situation was reportedly quite serious. I, a guilty servant, regret not reacting in time to go to his aid. I've heard about the person who acted violently. He directly attacked the children in the eastern city's welfare institute. Had it not been for Elder Shua blocking them, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Just then, a loud boom is heard. Long Chiodao feels like his entire dragon spirit body is about to explode. It's over. Trouble has come to Lord Zhao's most cherished welfare institute and also to Lord Zhao's grandfather, really asking for trouble. Suddenly, Xiao Tian sighs, adjusts his emotions, and then turns to leave. I'll go check on my grandfather first. This place is in your hands. When Xiao Tian arrives at the welfare institute and enters, he hears the sound of lecturing, but the voice of the lecturer sounds very familiar. In those years, after I desperately saved the demon emperor's son, he gave me a demon emperor shield. If I hadn't given it to Zi Ruoyan, that guy can't even get close to me. As Xiao Tian approaches the schoolhouse, he sees Elder Shua inside, vividly narrating his past adventures and odd experiences. The children below are listening attentively. At this moment, Xiao Tian doesn't disturb them, simply leaning against the wall outside the schoolhouse, silently listening. Elder Shua immediately senses something, turns his head, and sees Xiao Tian. Child, you're back home? Yes, I'm back home. Good to be home. Speaking of which, about barbecue, that Zhong Yang Ming guy can't compare to you, doesn't have the taste you make. These days, your grandfather has been craving it. I'll grill for you tonight. Xiao Tian quickly agrees. The skewers are all ready. Before the two can talk much, the children in the schoolhouse are already unable to contain themselves, immediately flocking around Xiao Tian. Brother Xiao is back. Brother Xiao, bad people wanted to harm Grandpa Shui. Yes, Brother Xiao, beat the bad guys. Don't worry, the bad guys won't escape punishment. Xiao Tian pats the children's heads, his expression very serious, assuring them. An hour later, inside the prince palace, the charcoal fire is burning red. Xiao Tian is personally grilling skewers. This child was really serious when he said it. He definitely won't let the bad guys escape punishment. Little Xiao is truly a good child. Elder Shui laughs heartily, describing the scene to his wife. Lu Guixiang nods in agreement, but your Shui family's actions are really excessive. Ah, the Shui family is powerful. What can we do? Elder Shui sighs, but then changes his tone. But now that my son-in-law's sworn brother has reached the 21st level, we have some means of self-protection. If it really comes to it, a letter from me, seeking his help. Grandfather, there's no need. This trouble is caused by me. I will handle it myself. Xiao Tian looks at Shue Fugui and seriously says, The Shue family is scheming against me. If I stay indifferent, I wouldn't be a real man. I didn't want to, but I have no choice. Shue Fugui and Lu Guixiang are stunned. Are we talking about the same thing? Shue Fugui pats his shoulder. What have you encountered? Why are you having such wild thoughts? Lu Guixiang looks at Xiao Tian, her expression solemn. The Shue family is powerful. The Shue family patriarch might already be at the 23rd level. Foolish child, don't act impulsively and go looking for trouble with the Shue family. Possibly? Xiao Tian looks at Lu Guixiang, slightly frowning. Grandma, why describe it like that? The Shue family patriarch has always hidden his strength, only revealing the 22nd level power in the past. Now, after so many years, his actual strength is unknown to anyone. Lu Guixiang subconsciously responds. Hearing this, Xiao Tian immediately becomes displeased. No, this won't do. The Shue family patriarch is too terrifying. I can't predict his moves. Grandpa, I must go and kill him. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming slaps himself on the face. I knew it. Shue Fugui and Lu Guixiang are baffled. How did the conversation lead to this? Did we miss something in between? Then, Xiao Tian soars into the air, looking at Zhong Yang Ming. Stay here with Grandpa. The barbecue ingredients are all prepared. If it's not enough, grill some more. Prince, do you need me to prepare supper or tomorrow's breakfast? Zhong Yang Ming sighs, looking up at the rising Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian thinks, then looks at Shue Fugui. Grandpa, do you know where the Shue family patriarch lives? Shue Fugui instinctively shakes his head. The patriarch's retreat is a secret. His status as a child born out of wedlock means he wouldn't know. Then, Puppy's figure appears behind him. Respected master, I've activated the tracking system left on Grandpa by Shua Anxian. Started the counter-tracking effect. Locked on to Shua Anxian's position. We can go directly there. Seeing this, Xiao Tian calculates. Then I must first capture Shua Anxian. This round trip might take some time. Supper might not be in time. For breakfast, I want porridge and make a few more meat pancakes. Zhong Yang Ming nods. Okay. Prince, be careful on the road. Don't accidentally shatter the realm world, causing innocent harm. Meanwhile, 
in the void. Puppy tells Xiao Tian, respected master, the location is just below in the realm world. However, half an hour ago, the counter-tracking effect was forcibly shut down by an external force. As he left, Xiao Tian crosses his arms, gazing at the realm world below. There was no departure before the location disappeared. If he hasn't left, he can't escape within the realm world. Xiao Tian suddenly dives, plunging into the realm world below. I want to see how they forcibly shut down my counter-tracking. Puppy follows closely, respected master. It might be that Shui Anxiang went to a space that isolates tracking. That caused our failure. Then I want to see even more. Meanwhile, outside the city walls of Cloud Coming Empire, Yun Qingyu's small face is filled with grief and anger. Biting her teeth, she runs swiftly ahead, surrounded by a group of people, fiercely guarding her. On everyone's faces, there is a mix of sadness and anger. Above them, several people are mocking. Ha ha ha, run, run faster. Aren't you the princess and guards of the Cloud Empire? Running so slowly, didn't you eat enough? As he speaks, the man spits out a fruit core. The fruit core, whistling through the air, speeds towards the front, directly piercing through the calf of a running guard. Yun Qingyu cries out in alarm, Master Lu, go, protect the princess, run. Lu Jin bellows, shouting at the other guards, Master Lu, get up quickly. Yun Qingyu's eyes brim with tears, wanting to rush forward to help him up. But before she can get close, she is pushed back by the shockwave of Lu Jin's spiritual energy. Don't mind me, that fruit core carried spiritual energy. I can't run anymore. No matter what, don't give up hope. Keep running forward, survive. As Lu Jin speaks, his gaze intensely fixed on Yun Qingyu, he commands. Yun Qingyu's face turns pale, but she is carried forward by the guards. This man is useless, kill him. Shui Li Guang in the air, looks towards his elder brother. Shui Ruoyu, while laughing, reveals his teeth. Clamped between his upper and lower teeth is a fruit core. The fruit core, slicing through the air. Lu Jin, lying on the ground, clenches his teeth. His eyes filled with sorrow. Your majesty, your servant comes to see you. As the explosion sounds, the surroundings are already engulfed in smoke. Lu Jin discovers he is unharmed, loyal to the master. Very commendable, young man. The newcomer is Xiao Tian, with an appreciative look on his face. Upon seeing her master rescued, Yun Qingyu rushed over in a hurry, arriving beside Lu Jin. Why are you here? Xiao Tian asked with hands behind his back, smiling slightly as he gazed at Yun Qingyu and the others. But before he could finish speaking, from afar in midair, Xue Li Guan was already frowning. Where did you come from? Daring to meddle in our business? Xiao Tian's tone paused for a moment, then continued speaking to Yun Qingyu and the others. I saw you were being chased, but I don't know the reason is. Hey, I'm talking to you. Xue Li Guan glared at Xiao Tian for ignoring him. Move the fruit pit in his mouth. Xiao Tian just shook his head, not wanting to argue. He was really curious. What exactly was the reason behind this sudden attack? From a distance in midair, Shui Ruanyu spoke again. Even cats and dogs dare to act tough here. Looking for death, the fruit pit flew out of Shui Guan's mouth, shooting towards Xiao Tian. Be careful. As Shui Guan spit the fruit pit, Xiao Tian had already turned around, being interrupted three times in a row. An irritated Xiao Tian suddenly threw a punch. A deafening roar erupted, his punch instantly tearing the space in front of him. Not far away, Shui Guan's body exploded into a mist of blood, instantly devoured by the torn space. Xiao Tian dusted off his hands. I just asked the question, why do you keep interrupting me? Really looking for death? Close by, Shui Runyu stood frozen in midair, not daring to move a muscle. Where did this monster come from? Xiao Tian glanced at Shui Runyu in the sky. That one up there. I didn't bother you, so why keep staring at me? Really annoying. In an instant, Xiao Tian appeared behind Shui Runyu. Shui Runyu was still wondering when he got there, but as soon as he turned his head, he saw a fist right in front of his face. With a bang, Shui Runyu, face first, crashed into the ground in front of everyone, wiping his cheek. Wait until I activate the 18th level wave. I'll kill you. Thinking this, Shui Runyu's body erupted with spiritual energy, but Yun Qingyu exclaimed in shock, you're actually forcibly activating the 18th level realm wave pressure. Shui Runyu smirked slightly, you should be happy you can see the realm wave pressure. It will be the talk of your death. But the next second, Xiao Tian just slapped him. The aura wave that had just started to emanate from Shui Runyu instantly shattered. Xiao Tian sat down on top of Shui Runyu, waving his hands at both of them. Tell me what happened here. Yun Qingyu immediately shivered a bit. Lu Jin, on the other hand, reacted quickly, directly bowing to Xiao Tian to explain the cause. Is this sudden appearance of the Sky Demon? Xiao Tian pointed at Shui Runyu under his butt. Sky Demon? Them? Yes. Benefactor. They descended from the sky, able to easily kill us with just a finger. We had no ability to resist. That's why we call them Sky Demons. Hearing this, Xiao Tian chuckled. Okay, continue. Lu Jin then slowly explained. They said they are from the so-called Ring Mountain Realm, the Shui family. They also seize our princess by force, and even hunt down those who try to escape, killing them with fruit pits spat from their mouths. Hearing this, Xiao Tian showed an expected smile. The Shui family, ha, huh, typical of something the Shui family would do. Just then, a floating airship suddenly appeared above everyone's heads. Xiao Tian turned to look, wondering why this airship looked so familiar. When the cabin door opened, Shui Fugui was right there at the doorway. Grandpa, Shui Fugui hurried to Xiao Tian's side. My child, running off so far, all of a sudden, really made Grandpa worry. Shui Fugui came before Xiao Tian, observing him up and down, 
relieved to find that he wasn't injured. Xiao Tian was surprised, looking at Xue Fugue. Grandpa, how did you come here? Xue Fugue sighed. How did I come here? You still have the nerve to ask. Always acting recklessly. Running over here thoughtlessly. Only endangers yourself. Just then, Xue Fugue suddenly looked up. Strange. How did this realm world crack open? Xiao Tian sheepishly smiled. Just now, I lost control of my temper, and accidentally cracked it open when I killed Xue Anxiang's son, Xue Liguan with a punch. So it is. But you need to be more careful next time. How could you just accidentally? Xue Fugue was saying. Suddenly his expression froze, turning his head to look at Xiao Tian. What did you say? You caused that, and you killed Xue Liguan? Xiao Tian, a bit embarrassed about that. It's a long story. Just then, a mansion appeared out of thin air. Xue Fugue turned to Xiao Tian and shouted, Then come in and tell me slowly. Shortly after, both sat at a stone table, with Xue Runyu kneeling there. Xue Fugue looked at the shattered void, clicking his tongue. Did my daughter-in-law misunderstand something? A divine power that can crack open a realm? Little Xiao, leaving the sky cracked like this. Isn't it a bit problematic? Xiao Tian waved his hand. This is easy to handle. Saying so, Xiao Tian soared into the sky. He put his hands together with force. The cracked sky above completely healed. After fixing it, Xiao Tian returned to Xue Fugui's side, showing a smile. Grandpa, no problem now. Xue Fugui was stunned. What kind of divine power can do that? Why do I feel like Xiao Tian is so physically dominant, able to need space like clay? Xue Fugui pondered for a while, then asked Xiao Tian again. Are you really physically dominant, able to crush space with your bare hands? Instead of using divine power, Xiao Tian quickly stretched out his hand. Fingers spread, force gathering at the fingertips, gently curling into a claw towards the palm. Grandpa, you understand me. I am really just physically strong. Don't believe me? Watch this. As a roaring sound erupted, space visibly collapsed in Xiao Tian's palm. Xue Fugui widened his eyes, observing carefully. My son-in-law's body seems unbelievably strong, wondering if he could match up against the Xue family. At that moment, Xue Fugui looked disdainfully at Xue Runyu kneeling on the ground. Where is your father? Hearing Xue Fugui speak, Xue Runyu quickly started crying and wailing. Uncle, you must save me. I don't want to die. That guy killed my brother. I am your own nephew. We share the same blood. Are we closer than this guy? Can you bear to see me killed? Hearing this, Xue Fugui grew irritated. I'm asking where your father is, and you're trying to sow discord? Saying so, Xue Fugui kicked Xue Runyu away. Close uncle and nephew? Pa. After saying this, Xue Fugui pointed at Xue Runyu towards Xiao Tian. My grandson, forget asking. Just kill him. Xiao Tian was moved by these words. Grandpa, why don't you personally clean house? Xue Fugui blushed. I can't beat him. But Xue Runyu immediately started cursing. Before he could finish, Xiao Tian grabbed his cheek. Dirty words. How can you follow grandpa's ears? Though killing you to vent anger would be best. You are still grandpa's nephew. By relation, you're also my elder. Can't lose courtesy. Xue Runyu was dumbfounded. Elder, you just punched an elder to death just now. And now you say this. Xiao Tian holding Xue Runyu. If you cooperate nicely and tell me where your father went, I'll let you go. Xue Runyu stammered. How can I speak with you covering my mouth? Let go of me first. Then I can answer. At that moment, Xiao Tian's face, once smiling, suddenly turned cold. Suddenly stepping down. A cracking sound. Bone shattering. Xue Runyu's leg was crushed. Intense pain swept over his entire body. I warned you earlier. I ask. You answer. Xiao Tian coldly looked at Xue Runyu. Not only did you not cooperate, but you kept silent, even provoking me. Hearing this, Xue Runyu lay on the ground, crying and whimpering, pointing at Xiao Tian, feeling inexplicably wronged. Seeing this, Xiao Tian directly crushed his wrist. I'm asking you a question. Not answering is one thing. But what's with the pointing? Think you're cool? Xue Fugue, watching all this, felt very satisfied. My son-in-law really knows how to bully people. Quite twisted. I like it. He he he. Just then, Xiao Tian again stepped and broke his waist bone. As a guilty person, instead of cooperating properly, you're wailing and weeping. What a disgrace. Xue Runyu finally couldn't bear it and cried out. How can I answer with you covering my mouth and nose? After you let go, I was in too much pain to speak. Can't you give me a moment to catch my breath? I was willing to cooperate. Why did you have to be so unreasonable and cripple me? Xiao Tian spread his hands. I'm only responsible for asking questions. How you answer is up to you. I'm covering your mouth and you can't answer. How is that my problem? Writing. Using spiritual sense. Either works, right? Xiao Tian said this, turning to Xue Fugui at his side and spreading his hands. This person is of the same generation as my mother-in-law, right? Um, he's even older than your mother-in-law, crying and whining at his age. Such a shameless thing. Xue Fugui also nodded in agreement. Indeed, I don't have such a shameless nephew. After saying this, both grandfather and grandson spit on the ground towards Xue Runyu lying there. Xue Runyu collapsed on the ground, widened his eyes, feeling deeply hurt inside, rolling on the ground in frustration. I can't live like this. Being bullied, doesn't anyone care? At this moment, Xiao Tian stepped on Xue Runyu's face. If you honestly reveal your father's whereabouts now, I might spare your life. Otherwise, unable to bear the torment any longer, Xue Runyu blurted out, I'll tell, I'll tell. My father and the others went to the Cloud Coming Empire ancestral land. I don't know exactly how long they'll be out. In an instant, Xiao Tian crushed him to death. In that case, you can go and atone for your sins with your brother. Just then, Xue Fugue looked at Xiao Tian, 
I heard that Prime Minister Zhong changed like this after learning from you. I also want to learn from you. Then personally deal with the Shue family people. Xiao Tian patted Shue Fugui's shoulder. Grandpa, that's easy. Let me check your bones first to see which martial arts you're suited for. Moments later, Shue Fugui looked at Xiao Tian with a not so good expression. What's wrong? Am I that untalented? At this moment, Xiao Tian also showed a smile. Grandpa, you're a one in a million martial arts genius. Shue Fugui scratched his head. Stop teasing me with my physique. How could I possibly be a one in a million genius? No, Grandpa, your physique is really good, naturally robust. It's just because you ate too much good stuff to enhance your cultivation. It accumulated in your body and couldn't be metabolized, leading to obesity. The next second, Xiao Tian directly slapped his hand on Shue Fugui's head. Believe me, once I unblock your eight extraordinary meridians, you'll definitely soar into the sky, even more powerful than Zhong Yangming. As a burst of golden light shone, Xiao Tian slapped his back again. Finally, to finish off, Xiao Tian suddenly slapped the top of Shue Fugui's head. Seeing this, Xiao Tian clapped his hands. Not bad, it's done. But Xiao Tian was stunned. Grandpa, how much good stuff did you eat? Others emit a foul smell when their marrow is cleansed. But this smell from you, it's actually quite fragrant. Little Xiao, why do I feel a bit uncomfortable? Xiao Tian waved his hand. Grandpa, don't come over just yet. I'll teach you to practice boxing. Eight extremes fist to train your physical fitness. It can help you rapidly consume the excess heat in your body. Moments later, Shue Fugui started boxing under Xiao Tian's guidance. Really, little Xiao, after boxing, I feel much lighter. Xiao Tian watched the scene, marveling, truly a one in a million martial arts genius. Grandpa was simply unblocked by me, and already such an extraordinary effect. I'm very curious about what state Grandpa will reach, once he fully masters eight extremes fist. After an unknown amount of time, Xiao Tian, who was sleeping on the side, suddenly woke up. But when he turned to look at Shue Fugui, he was stunned. Grandpa looks so handsome after slimming down. Really, fat people are all potential stocks. In a blink of an eye, Shue Fugui returned to his original chubby and honest appearance. Xiao Tian couldn't help but ask, Grandpa, how much good stuff did you eat? Even now, it's not fully consumed? Shue Fugui, puzzled, consume what? Saying so, Shue Fugui took out a pill. I get hungry after practicing, need to replenish. Xiao Tian was about to stop him, but Shue Fugui had already eaten it. Xiao Tian, holding his forehead, was somewhat speechless. Just then, Shue Fugui stepped forward. Little Xiao, really, thank you so much. As his voice fell, a terrifying roar instantly exploded. A fearsome force swept through. The ground under Xiao Tian and Shue Fugui's feet instantly collapsed. Dust rose everywhere. The entire ground kept falling, forming a huge pit. Shue Fugui, supported by Xiao Tian, stood in midair, looking at the pit below and the cracked earth all around, dumbfounded. Little Xiao, I just stepped forward. How did it turn out like this? Xiao Tian, supporting Shue Fugui, slowly descended. Grandpa, let's stay in the Cloud Coming Empire's palace for now. I'll teach you there how to control your strength. You should learn it. Shue Fugui, murmuring, it's a pity about this mansion. I really liked it. Soon after, inside the Cloud Coming Empire palace, they, grandfather and grandson, Sun, in the Imperial Garden on the mountainside, watched the sunrise. Looks like we won't make it back for breakfast. It's a shame to miss the meat buns and porridge Prime Minister Zhong prepared for me. Shue Fugui, feeling a bit embarrassed, looked at Xiao Tian beside him. Little Xiao, you really worked hard, teaching me all night. Xiao Tian waved his hand. Grandpa, that's not important. Now we need to first kill Shue Anxiang, then make a trip to the Shue family. Once we get to the Shue family, we must cooperate. Little Xiao, how do we cooperate? It's simple. Xiao Tian revealed a smile. Grandpa, you're responsible for killing the other members of your Shue family, and I'll take care of your ancestor. The two of us together will eradicate the Shue family. Hearing this, Shue Fugui suddenly couldn't control his strength, directly crushing the teacup in his hand. Even if I've mastered eight extremes fist, just the two of us. Eradicate the Shue family? Have you gone mad? Xiao Tian patted Shue Fugui's shoulder. Grandpa, don't be too shocked. Compared to eradicating the Shue family, I think there's something else we need to confirm quickly. Shue Fugui was startled. What is it? I think you're not biologically related. Hearing Xiao Tian's words, Shue Fugui's expression froze, slowly turning his head to look at him. Do you know what you're saying? You see, you outcasts in the Shue family are all just sacrificial pawns. It's very possible that you're not actually blood-related, but taken from a side branch. Hearing this, Shue Fugui had an epiphany. Little Xiao, your guess seems right. It looks like only when my elder brother comes out from the Cloud Coming Empire ancestral land can we possibly find out more. Xiao Tian looked at Shue Fugui, nodding gently, comforting him. Grandpa, rest assured, believe in your current strength. Taking down that Shue Anxiang will be more than enough. Suddenly, a buzzing sound came from a distance, as if something was gently trembling. Shue Fugui looked up, the cloud coming empire ancestral land. There's movement. It seems my elder brother is coming out. Xiao Tian nodded at the side. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly asked, By the way, Grandpa, was the founder of your Shue family really a farmer? The great virtue emperor, our ancestor, was one of the four emperors under the human emperor. His favorite thing was farming. He loved creating small worlds and various realm worlds, planting crops and raising fish in them. Before leaving, he would design some harmless little mechanisms. Li 
leaving some treasures behind. Over time, it came to be regarded as the ancestral land of the Shua family. I was fortunate to have once obtained such a place. Xiao Tian exhaled, really bizarre hobbies. Moments later, Xiao Tian and Shue Fugue had already reached the top of Misty Snow Mountain, standing in front of the cave dwelling. Next, the stone door suddenly revealed a twisted vortex. Two somewhat disheveled figures were blown out, crashing heavily to the ground. Shue Anxiang, holding his chin, was extremely annoyed. What is this nonsense? Why is it so torturous? Next to him, Zi Yusin, equally frustrated. Your ancestor, really stubborn. The ancestral land of the Shue family should belong to the descendants of the Shue family. Why should everyone be given a chance and treated equally? While the couple was complaining, suddenly a voice came from the side. If the great virtue emperor, our ancestor, knew he had such descendants, he would probably be so angry that he'd smash your heads with a hoe. The two sharply turned their heads. Shue Fugue, why are you here? What is that? Zi Yusin suddenly sensed something amiss. Zi Yusin couldn't help but scream out, trembling slightly, her body's spiritual energy bursting forth. Hearing his wife scream, Shue Anxiang also quickly turned his head, eyes wide in shock. His son was dead, and even strung up on the walls of the palace. Who is it? Who exactly is it? In such a lower realm world, no one could have killed Shue Wenyu, except for you. You have such a cruel heart. He was your own nephew. Could you really bring yourself to do it? Shue Fugue smiled slightly, really interesting. Shue Anxiang, don't you feel ashamed saying that? Before, you said I was a dog you raised, and now I'm your son's close uncle and nephew? 